Greetings, everyone. My name is Jonathan Bailey. I am from the website Plagiarism Today, which can be found at PlagiarismToday.com. I am a copyright and plagiarism expert with 18 years experience in the field. I have testified before both federal and state courts as well as academic tribunals as an expert. If you think my knowledge and expertise may be able to help you out in some way, please reach out to me at my consulting site, copybyte.com. That's C-O-P-Y-B-Y-T-E.com. That's where I list all the various services I provide, including DMCA Takedown and DMCA Agent Services, among other things. If you think I can help, that's where you get in touch with me. YouTube's not paying me for these videos, and I gotta fund the wall of crap somehow. Well, on that note, everyone, I, I guess we gotta do it. Those of you who follow me know that over I took a week off over the holidays, A, because I wanted a holiday, and B, because the only thing really to talk about was the Claudine Gay scandal. And, yeah, I really didn't want to talk about it. A, I, I felt like I'd said everything about it that I could. I've writ By that point, I'd written three articles on it. Um, I'd been all over the news media, including an appearance on CNN and in multiple papers like the Boston Globe. Um... I felt like I'd really said my piece on it, and I didn't have that much to add. However, there have been a lot of developments in this past week, so we do need to talk about it. Now, the other reason I didn't want to talk about it was because I know that this is a very, very politically charged scandal. And I know a lot of people who will be viewing this, especially those who aren't my regular subscribers, are coming here with a predetermined outcome that they think is acceptable. And they're probably going to want me to say something definitive like person X good, person Y bad. I'm not going to do that. These are nuanced and complicated issues. And trying to simplify them into something that's a binary choice doesn't really work. And that's especially true now that there's been sort of a follow-up to it, I guess, in a weird way, with Neri Oxman, the wife of Bill Ackman, one of Claudine Gay's biggest critics. We'll come to that in a minute, but yeah... I know this is politically charged, I know a lot of people are coming here with preconceived notions, and I know probably none of them are going to be very happy with me by the time this is over. So, if that's you, if I just described your situation, please click off the video. I don't need my comment sections to be made more interesting right now. On that note, I would indeed like to talk about the scandal, but we're going to do it from a slightly different angle. We're going to talk about it from my perspective which is a little bit different and a little bit weird because I'm not directly involved in this. However, for me, the Claudine Gay scandal is not one week old, it's not one month old. I actually first heard her name and knew about these allegations on November 5th or November 6th, um, basically a month before they, over a month before they became public. The reason for that was I was reached out to by a reporter who gave me the evidence of plagiarism, the first round of evidence against her, that's all that existed at the time, and asked me to do an evaluation of it. And I did. There were 22 allegations in that, and of them, I felt like two were definitely very problematic and required some kind of, some kind of response, probably even a strong response. Two more were a bit on the fence, and the rest were weak. They were just too short to be evidence of copying. It could be a coincidence. It could be that it's the only way to say that. Or there was something else going on with it where it just didn't prove copying. It's a difficult art trying to prove that something was copied from one source to another. It's a very difficult task. And a lot of the allegations just didn't hold water. But there were still serious ones to look at and examine. And those were my findings. Now, the issue with Claudine Gay's work, for the most part, has been that even though she cited her sources... She never cite, she in many cases did not cite when she was using verbatim passages from, and this is a very serious problem. As an academic, as a researcher, you have an obligation not just to cite the facts and information that you use, but the words that you use. There's two elements there, facts and words. And the in-text citations cover the citation of the facts, but you need to put things in quotes or block quotes or something to indicate that this passage is verbatim. And at least over the course of the entire scandal, there were between six and 12 passages that definitely should have been quoted. Now, when I first heard about it and I had my back and forth with this reporter, I said something very similar to what I've been saying all along, which is Harvard needs to do a very thorough investigation into Gay's work. It needs to be independent, meaning someone outside the organization needs to be brought in. It needs to be transparent, and it needs to be done expediently. Well, and this is where I think Harvard really screwed up, 
is they did not do that analysis. By all accounts, they did not actually do any additional checking into Gay's work, which A, is a violation of their own policies, I've come to understand. They were supposed to dig deeper, but didn't, uh, for reasons unclear. And for a second, it just ensured that they were caught off guard when the second round and the third round of scandals happened. But anyways, I heard about it on the 5th, did my analysis, did my back and forth with the reporter, and it seemed like the story had died. And this is not uncommon in my line of work. I get contacted by reporters all the time. Hey, so-and-so has allegations of plagiarism. Well, you look at it. I look at it, and maybe I find something, maybe I don't, but we go back and forth, and the story just kind of dies on the vine. It happens. I have probably worked on twice as many stories that didn't get published as I have that did. So it really wasn't unexpected or that shocking to me. But then the hearing happened in early December, which I'm not jumping into the politics of that, definitely, but I think everyone, including both her supporters and detractors, agree that hearing was very poorly handled. So I think we can all just kind of agree on that. But it made her a political lightning rod, and it was shortly after that the allegations were published by the Washington Free Beacon. Then Harvard said that they knew about those allegations. They said that they had already were issuing corrections for them. Apparently Harvard examined the document and came to very similar conclusions that I did, that a lot of the allegations didn't make sense and that there were some that definitely needed some kind of action. And they said they were going to issue corrections and that was going to be it. But then, because they didn't do the investigation that they should have done, they were caught flat-footed by a second and then a third round of allegations. And that kept the plagiarism allegations in the spotlight for much longer than they should have been. I'm not saying Claudine Gay would still have her job if Harvard had done their due diligence here. I don't know. She was already a lightning rod. There was already a lot of calls for her resignation way before the plagiarism allegations came up. So I don't know what would have happened. I won't even speculate. But... I know that they, things would have been better if they had gotten ahead of this and found these other issues out before they were published you know, in the media. Instead, they were caught flat-footed because they didn't do their due diligence, and that kept the scandal going. It lasted for functionally a month. And earlier this week, she resigned, and I think she didn't have a choice in that matter. Now, to be clear, I don't think she's being treated like a regular researcher in this capacity. I'm not saying what Claudine Gay did is good. It's definitely plagiarism, it is definitely problematic, and it definitely warrants an investigation, like I said. But we're talking about 6 to 12 passages over the course of her career, and in most cases, she did cite the source, she just did not indicate that she was using language verbatim. This is a type of plagiarism that's more, more common with sloppy writing or bad writing practices than it is with a malicious intent. Simply put. However, since Claudine Gay is, or rather was, the president of Harvard and was a politically controversial figure, she was getting additional scrutiny, and as the scandal kept dragging out, it was nothing but a distraction and a problem for both her and for Harvard. Resigning was maybe not right or wrong thing to do, but probably the only thing that she could do. And so now she's going back to her position as a faculty, and they've appointed an interim president for the meantime. All in all, it's an interesting story because, like I said, if she were any other researcher, I would not expect her to be punished as harshly. I wouldn't expect it to rise to the level of termination, not on what is known today. Like I said, we still haven't had a full accounting of it, and that does bother me. But from what we know today, I would genuinely expect a researcher to, A, be forced to correct the record, obviously, and B, probably have some other punishment, maybe take a remedial class in research writing, or maybe be suspended from doing research until all the corrections are in place, or for a designated period of time. I, termination for this type of plagiarism would be rare, by its, if it's the only issue, of course. If the science has somehow been marred by it, or if there are more serious issues, or if there's a lot more examples of this in their work, then yeah. Maybe termination then, but from what we had today, I honestly don't think I would expect to see a researcher be fired. Now, that said, I'm not dismissing the severity of what happened. These are serious issues, and they do, like I said, warrant a response. And Harvard really did drop the ball when it comes to performing the analysis and doing their due diligence. So there's a lot of blame to go around here. But what I've been most worried about and what seems to be definitely coming to fruition is the weaponization of plagiarism. Like I said, these allegations were known to reporters 
over a month before they were made public. And they were only made public after she became such a big political lightning rod following that, that testimony. The plagiarism allegations weren't seen as interesting enough to release or cover until she became, you know, like I said, a lightning rod after that, after that hearing. Rough. It's the weaponization of plagiarism. And now we've seen another example of it in the Neri Oxman. Neri Oxman apparently had very similar issues of plagiarism in her dissertation. Now, right now, there have been two rounds of accusations, both from Business Insider. The first one accuses her of doing very, very much things like Claudine Gay is accused of doing, where she cites the sources, but didn't indicate that something was quoted. Claudine Gay did something very similar in her work. But the second round is the more worrisome, as they found evidence of copying from Wikipedia and other sources that were not cited at all in the dissertation. That is significantly more problematic, and once again... I'm going to repeat myself. I think what should happen is there should be a very thorough investigation of the dissertation and other academic work that that Oxman has done. It should be done by an independent party. It should be done transparently. And basically, it should be done expediently. Will that happen? I don't know. Because it seems like right now, people are only checking for plagiarism in the works of people that they want to get dirt on. And that is incredibly frustrating as someone who does have a genuine interest in research and academic integrity. One thing that I want to make clear is that while all plagiarism is bad, it does exist on a spectrum from extremely serious to white, white, but that's not actually plagiarism, basically. And both of these stories right now sit somewhere in the middle. They're complicated and nuanced stories, and both require much more thorough examination than probably what's going to happen. And that is indeed my worry here. We're seeing plagiarism weaponized, and the whole goal is to be able to call someone a plagiarist, not necessarily to get the actual facts about what happened and take a look at the situation in a nuanced manner. And both Oxman and Gay are being attacked and defended less on the actual details of the plagiarism and more on whether or not the person doing the attacking likes them. It's frustrating. Like I said, as someone with a serious interest in academic and research integrity, this really bothers me. Where do we go from here? Well, Bill Ackman, um, Oxman's husband, has basically decried this as an attack on his family and has said that now he's going to escalate the weaponization of plagiarism by literally checking everyone at MIT, every faculty member and, and various board members in that, which they weren't actually involved in the allegations against Oxman. In fact, to my knowledge, they only became aware of it super recently. It was Business Insider that was actually responsible for the allegations. So this represents a further escal escalation in the weaponization of plagiarism. And the problem I have with that is simple. Doing a plagiarism check, a proper real plagiarism check, takes a lot of time. Yeah, it's only a few minutes to generate that authenticate report or the plague scan report or the whatever you're using report only takes a few minutes. I get that. But going through that report, weeding out the things that don't indicate plagiarism and getting to the actual core of the matter, that can take a lot of hours. And the reason is very simple. Plagiarism detection services don't actually detect plagiarism. They detect similar text. They don't even necessarily detect copy text. Even if the text is original, but it's the same to someone else's work, it will show up. And so the job of the human doing the analysis is to go through, filter out what is a non-issue, find what is an issue, expand on those, that sort of get to the core of it, and then generate findings based upon that. It's a lengthy process, and it's one. And I routinely have people balk at my estimates because they don't realize how many hours an analysis, especially on something the length of a dissertation, how long that takes. If you're doing it to actually get information and to make a real determination, it's a lengthy process. The concern I have is that we're not going to see people putting in that kind of work. They're coming in with a very clear goal to find someone out as a plagiarist. And they're going to maybe not do as thorough of a job in filtering. They're maybe not going to examine the evidence as closely as they should. And that's a very concerning issue. Because the more and more times people are called plagiarists, 
when they're not really one or when the issue is relatively minor or when people are trying to take a relatively small issue and make it bigger is that it devalues the severity of plagiarism overall. It hurts people like me who are doing actual work and trying to improve academic and research integrity because at some point it becomes the boy who cried wolf. And to be clear, this is not something tethered to one political ideology or another. Political plagiarism scandals go back, well, probably as long as there have been politics and plagiarism, but definitely they've been a major force for the past 25 years or so. I mean, I have personally have reported on stories involving Barack Obama, John McCain, Donald Trump, um, Melania Trump as well. Uh, basically, a ton of political figures all sides of the aisle have been accused of plagiarism, sometimes with good reason, sometimes with less good reason. Usually it's a tempest in a teapot situation. But either way, we're going to be seeing a lot more of that. So if your interest genuinely is plagiarism, I encourage you to not just trust any reporting about person X or person Y being a plagiarist. Instead, look at the evidence look at what's presented, and make a decision for yourself. On that note, everyone, I thank you very much for spending this time with me. I really do hope that this was helpful in some way, and that the comments in this don't get too ugly. Until next time, this is Jonathan Bailey, signing off.